So I was in the middle of a Scrabble game. And I don't mean to brag, but I'm actually pretty good at Scrabble. But in this particular game, my butt was being kicked by one of the men staying at our brother's place, a men's homeless shelter in the heart of Philadelphia. Amidst my struggle to find a word that would impress him, I hear my roommate, who's two tables over, mind you, talking about me. I get up, admitting defeat to the new king of Scrabble, and I wander over to their table. And I hear her telling the man that she's with that I went to an all-girls high school, which confuses me, because even though I find this to be a very significant part of my identity, a lot of other people just don't care. <laughs> when I get to their table, the man asks if I'm the one who went to the all-girls high school, and I proudly say that I am and that I loved every single minute of my time there. He tells me that he too went to a single gendered high school, but he does not share the same love and affection for his high school as I do for mine. It is this seemingly small commonality that is the foundation of my relationship with a man named Tattoo. Tattoo and I seem like an unlikely duo. He grew up on the small island of St. Thomas and I grew up in Chicago. He's a member of a gang whose other members I coincidentally live next door to, and I'm a member of six on campus organizations. He's been shot nine times and has been to jail. I've done neither of those things yet. Um, <laughs> our differences are abundant. I haven't even listed all of them for you. But that made finding similarities that much sweeter. We're both committed to service. He teaches English to non-native speakers, and he also mentors youth who are likely to join gangs when they get older. I've been in the CHIPS program all, th well, three years. And then I also am doing a year of service with AmeriCorps after graduation. We both really enjoy cookies, and it is this shared love of cookies that actually really reminds me of what it means to be a friend and to be selfless. Every day for lunch, we would eat with the men at our brother's place, and more often than not, we were eating a sack lunch. If you were super lucky, you got a cookie in your sack lunch, and if you were super, super lucky, you got two. More often than not, I'd be a super, super lucky person and get two cookies. Yet, despite this, every single day, even if Tattoo only got one cookie, he would always share at least part of it, if not just give me the entire thing. This always confused me and kind of made me uncomfortable because how can I take something from someone who one doesn't have much and two is giving me something that we both love. I kind of rectified this by choosing to redefine what I think of service. Now service is no longer this task that I'm just doing to help another person. Now it's actually being in relationship and in community with those around me. Today you and I are both going to leave different people. I've chosen to share this story with you, and you've chosen to hopefully accept and internalize this story in whatever way you choose to do so. Through this, we're actually performing service right now just by being in relationship with one another. Tattoo reminds me of a theory I have. So I believe that every single person is who they are because of all the people around them, which kind of fits in with my new definition of service, right? So I'm the person I am today, this person right here, 21 years old, because of every single person I've met in the past 21 years and every single interaction I've had, whether good or bad. You are who you are for the exact same reasons. Now, I didn't think I had much to offer a tattoo besides like some decent conversation in my goofy nature. Yet day after day, we continue to seek each other out. And if I didn't see tattoo in the morning before our educational component that day, I got a little worried. And if I didn't see him by lunch, I was a little bit beside myself. At the end of our trip, tattoo told a few of us that if we ever found ourselves in trouble, we should name drop him and his gang, and whatever problems we had, <laughs> they would just disappear. And this is a little alarming and a little too mob-like for my taste. But I realize now that that's Tattoo's way of thanking us. This, he was providing protection for us. I've been told that this is kind of like Tattoo's business card, the way that he's going to ensure that we're okay no matter what happens in our future. And although I don't necessarily know if I'll ever find myself in a position where I'm gonna use that business card, I know I feel pretty darn lucky to have that business card just making my wallet a little bit thicker every single day. <laughs>